Let's look at 10 different experimental text effects that you can try out in your next poster design. First up, we're gonna look at the basic text warp options we have available in Photoshop. So I'm gonna make a new layer, type out game day, that is the word we'll be using for today. And hitting T for your type tool, you can go up to this little icon at the top. This is our text warp panel that comes up. And from here, you know, you can play around with these different styles. They've got a lot of wavy stuff in here. You can also check out my video on wavy text effects. I'll go over some of these. You can bend and warp the text in different funky ways. You can go way overboard. You can make it more subtle, but really endless options to play with. You've got 14 or 15 different options in this panel. And then each of them, you can play with the bend and distortion, both vertically and horizontally. And you can also do this with stacked text too. So if you typed out game day, copied and pasted it a couple times and reduce the spacing, you can again go up to the text warp and it'll warp everything together. Like you can create this, this wave effect throughout the whole thing and we can set this to go behind our cutout. But you can imagine some kind of poster that has some, some interesting wavy text in the background. Next up, we're gonna look at stretched text effects. So again, we'll type out game day. I should probably just keep a layer of game day available. I'll duplicate this one so we don't have to go back. So for stretching text out, first you're going to want to convert it to a shape. So if you go to the layer and right click in the layers panel, you can scroll down to convert to shape. And now hitting A for the direct selection tool, that's going to bring up all these individual what are called anchor points. So if we want to stretch out the E, for example, that's kind of a common letter you might want to stretch. First, I would move the day, D-A-Y, over to the right. So we can do that with the direct selection tool, clicking and dragging to select all of these points, and then just using our arrow key to shift things over to the right. And something like this, and then if we wanna stretch out the E, I would select all of these points. And again, you can do this by clicking and dragging and making a box. And as long as these points are selected, we can now click and drag these over to stretch out the E. And we can even line up this middle one, just if we wanna go for some kind of effect like that. And you can bring the day closer, close this gap. Next up, we're gonna look at some overall spacing you can play with in interesting ways. So again, we'll start with this game day text. The first spacing type, I would go super close together. So you can mess with this dial right here. This is in the character panel. You can lower it to basically squish the letters in close and I'm gonna make it so there are no like weird gaps. So this gap right here between the D and the A is a little bit annoying. So I'm just gonna select the D and decrease the spacing from there just to close that gap some more. And then same thing with this A and Y. I'm gonna highlight the A and bring the Y closer in. So we've got this tight together game day text. And from here, you can actually play with some negative spacing as well. First, I'm gonna blow this up a little bit, just transform command T. But if you wanted to make like a rectangle around this, we can take our rectangle tool, let's make a new layer below it. And I'm just gonna fill a rectangle with black and I'm gonna draw it out across the whole thing. So something like this, and we can center it on the game day text. But now if we set the game day to white, you now have this interesting negative space you can play with, especially if we blow it up and get rid of any lines. So really like on first glance, you might just see like some random black shapes, but it actually creates the word game day in the negative space. So that's always a fun way to play with spacing. The other way I like to play with it is through like text justification and basically spreading out text equally. So I'll show you what I mean. If we make a new layer, let's draw out a text box. So I'm gonna draw out something like this. And for this, we're gonna use the word McDonald, which is Rowan's last name. So this is our, our player, Rowan McDonald. I'm just gonna type out McDonald. And for the text, for the character panel, or actually the paragraph panel, we're gonna change the justification to this one all the way on the right. So this is gonna make it so the letters are equally spaced on whatever line. And now if we separate out these letters, so you'll notice there's nine letters total, we can basically make three lines of three letters each 
just by hitting return after the three letters. So now from here, we can space all this out with our space between lines and you're left with something like this and you can play with this further you can shrink the text down but it should maintain that equal spacing this is kind of a cool effect a cool way to fill some space in kind of a square or rectangle pattern and you know you could drop it behind the cutout use that as the last name but maybe write out the first name in script or something overall would definitely encourage you to play with different text spacing concepts just within the character panel within the paragraph panel there's a lot of fun stuff you can do. Next up, we're gonna look at this off the page text effect. So I'm gonna reactivate our game day layer, duplicate it and bring it up to the top. And for this off the page is exactly what it sounds like. We're basically gonna position this so the text goes off the page. So something like this. And we can make this a lot bigger for this effect. So maybe we want the word game up at the top with the E kind of cutting off. And then we can duplicate this and move the next layer down to the other side where it kind of resumes the E and then of course the rest of the day. So you can have some fun with this. You could put like, you know, one of these up in the top right, one of them down in the bottom left. You can have them closer together. You can make them big, small. You can even duplicate the, the whole idea of it. And, and as you move it around, you'll see because of how we spaced it initially, it's always like continuing the word onto the next line. Next up, we're gonna do some perspective transforming. So let's deactivate that text. We'll bring back our original game day, duplicate it. And for this one, we're gonna go up to filter, convert for smart filters first. And this is just gonna convert this to a smart object. We can now edit this with different filters and transformations. Now we'll go to edit, transform, perspective. And you can drag these corners to basically play with the perspective and make it feel like kind of a 3D image. And so if we wanted to like put the word game day more like in the flow of the player cutout, I think that's a really effective way to do it. You can also play with words and create like text on the floor of the image. This one we can edit transform perspective and then we'll drag out this bottom corner to kind of flatten the whole thing and you can bring these top ones in but you can see playing with this would give you some kind of floor option for your player to stand on. Next, we're gonna look at some blur and smudging effects. So let's take our original text again. And for this one, I'm going to, let's blow it up a little bit. Let's also convert this one for smart filters right off the bat. And then we're gonna go to filter, blur, Blur Gallery, actually, and then we'll go to Field Blur. And Field Blur basically allows you to pick different points and blur them in different ways. So if we wanted to like blur the G a lot, but then we make another point just by clicking between the A and the M, we can lower the blur on this part of the word. And you can see basically just messing with the blur in different spots can create this interesting kind of variable blur effect. So have fun with that, play around. And to take this blurry text a step further, we can go up to filter liquify, and we're just gonna create some like little smudges on the edges of the letters. So I'm gonna zoom in. We can lower our brush a little bit, but we want this, this first top left forward warp tool and just ever so slightly, I mean like that, that I would say is too much Maybe just taking the edge of the brush, and bringing out that smudge. You can do the same with some of the lower parts of the letters, but just playing around and kind of giving it the smudgy blur feel. There's the smudgy blur effect. We're gonna move on to displacement maps. And this is pretty simple. We can even do it on this same layer, but if you go up to filter, distort, displace, you can mess with the horizontal and vertical scale. I think starting with 10 makes a lot of sense. I typically just keep these settings the same, but you're welcome to play around with those as well. We'll hit okay. And now what we're gonna do is map this displacement to a specific Photoshop file or a texture. So we'll double click on our texture and you'll see it creates this, this fuzzy distortion on the whole thing. And we can play with this if you wanna double click displace, we can like re-edit the horizontal and vertical scale if you wanted it more or less, but like if you only wanted it at five each way, 
you can hit OK, go back to the texture, and you have a slightly more subtle version of the effect. And this displacement map idea can basically give you unlimited text effects and variations. And it's worth experimenting with really whatever Photoshop files you have on hand. Sorry for all these lines going across my face, by the way, the blinds are attacking me. Next up, we're gonna look at a pixelated text effect. So let's bring back our initial game day text. And for this one, let's go back to filter, convert for smart filters. We are gonna now go down to filter, pixelate, and then mosaic. And you can see mosaic just naturally gives it this pixely feel, but you can adjust the, the size of each of the squares and make the effect more or less dramatic. But now to make this like solid pixels rather than kind of fading pixels, we can drop a threshold adjustment layer on top of this. So let's go down to our adjustment layers Let's go to threshold, and you can see that when you move this dial around, you can kind of play with how much it's pixelating it and exactly what the effect is doing. So something like this, and you can adjust back to the mosaic just by double clicking in the smart filters. If you wanted to reduce the cell size down to five, for example, you can get a slightly different pixelation on the text. Next up, we're gonna look at some glitch effects. And for glitch effects, there's a variety of ways you can go about doing it. You can have more or less control over how the whole thing turns out. But to start, if you wanna do it all kind of manually, we can, let's duplicate this layer so we can come back to it. Let's rasterize it by right clicking and going to rasterize type. So this is converting the text into just an image, basically. And now from here, we can take our rectangular marquee tool, M is a shortcut. You can just start drawing out rectangles. And then if you shift to the move tool, V, you can hit shift and hit the arrow keys to start moving things around. And then you can just kind of repeat this process with different parts of the image that you wanna kinda glitch out. So that is one method to do it manually. The other way you can go about doing it a bit more automated is if you wanna duplicate this layer again, this time convert it for smart filters. And you can go to stylize wind under filter and then set the method to blast, hit okay and this kind of gives more of like a, a skinnier glitch effect. The problem is you don't have a ton of control over exactly you know how these lines look, the width of the lines, but you could also reapply this effect if you go back up to filter wind and give it another blast, and you can play with the other settings as well. You'll see this kind of gives a, a different feeling glitch effect as opposed to the individual rectangle movements. Third way you could go about doing it if you wanna delete these smart filters for now, Go back up to filter, you can go to distort and wave. If you set the wave type to square and keep the, the number of generators relatively low, I would say amplitude between 14 and 15, you can see in this preview what the wavelength is doing when you adjust these dials. So something like this, and it just kind of like creates a, a crease and sort of a square wavy pattern with the text. The last effect we'll look at today is this liquify text effect. So I'm gonna bring up our text layer. For this one, I'm gonna start by transforming it vertically and just stretching it out a little bit just so we have like some more taller text to work with. I would recommend just using a skinnier, taller font, but for now we can just go this route. Go to filter, convert for smart filters, and then filter liquify. We're basically gonna drag down all of these points from the game day text. So I'm gonna take a pretty big brush, and again, having it set to this forward warp tool, we can start extending downward just the bottom parts of all of these letters. Actually, no, let's use a smaller brush and just get more refined with our selections. But you can see this is just stretching the text all the way down, and you know, you can play with this as you see fit. So we'll stop there for now, but you can keep playing with yours. And we can do some more interesting things to this, like if you wanted to fade out the bottom, you can drop a mask over it, and just go to your gradient tool. We can do a black to transparent mask, and just click and drag upward, so we kind of have it 
fading out. And if you wanted to blur this whole thing, you could do that as well. Combine this with some of the other effects we went over, but you could also just do a, a Gaussian blur and bring it up a little bit, 3.5 or something like that. And then you could start playing with the colors too. We could drop a gradient map over this whole thing. So if you go to your adjustments, gradient map, you can set this to one of the presets or just like kind of a variety of colors, but in the reds, there's this option and then you kind of get this interesting gradient look from the blur and from the liquify. You know, you can add colors as needed, but highly encourage you to play with this effect as well. That's gonna do it for today's text effects. I really think typography can open up your poster designs. Like if you're ever feeling stuck, just try out some different text effects and typography designs, and you'll be surprised where your designs might start taking you. So keep experimenting, keep playing around, and as always, let me know if you have any questions.